Welcome to our score editor tutorial. First of all, let's create a MIDI part. Grab the pen and draw a part. Now select MIDI, open score editor. Before converting your MIDI part to a score, keep in mind what sounds good as MIDI may look clumsy when converted to a score. You may want to copy the MIDI part and over quantize it or even re record the part altogether and remove what is called the human touch before starting to work on your score. From the score menu, you can switch between edit modes and page modes. Use the scroll bar in edit mode and these up and down arrows in page mode to navigate through your score. Clicking on the ruler will bring up the position info window. The zoom menu is right here. Or you can use the magnifying lens. Click or select a region. To zoom out, hold the Alt key and click. To correct the number of bars per staff, select Score, Layout Functions, Number of Bars. Now let's insert a few notes. Click the Insert Note button in the toolbar. Select a quarter note and the appropriate quantize value. I'm going to choose quarter note step and let's insert a few notes. Cubase will insert rest symbols automatically. The mouse position display will help you insert notes in the appropriate place. The info line displays information about your selected note. Let's insert an eighth note. You'll notice that Cubase is inserting the notes at the quarter note position. To fix this, change your quantize value to one eighth. To change your note value, select the note, hold the control key, and select a different note value here. Another way to change your note length is like this. Select the note tool and the note value, hold the Alt key, and click on the note value which you want to change. To string notes together, use the glue gun. And to remove a tie, use the split tool. Right click on a note head. This will bring up a pop up window where you can select a different note head. Double clicking on a note will bring up the set note info window. Here you can change the note's appearance and other related parameters. To reposition a note, simply grab it and drag it to a new position. The score editor is not just a simple drawing tool, it is a real-time editor. Open your key editor 
And you can see that manipulating events in the key editor affects corresponding events in the score editor in real time. Look at the info line in the key editor and the score editor. You can see they display information about MIDI events and notes in virtually the same way. But if MIDI modes are defined by pitch, position, length, and velocity, to define notes in the score, you obviously have to have more parameters. The point here is this. As I mentioned earlier, not every MIDI part is good material for the score editor. The human touch, or irregularities in performance, make music sound good. But doing that makes your score look very confusing. Back to the score editor. These two buttons let you insert triplet and dotted notes. An enharmonic shift lets you change the appearance of the note. For example, C sharp can appear as D flat. Select the note, double click on the pitch value, and type C sharp. Press enter. Click on enharmonic shift flat button and C sharp appears as D flat. The off button will bring a note to its original position. Press the no button and C sharp becomes C. To edit a clef, double click on the clef. Use this scroll bar to choose the appropriate clef. Get info brings up a dialog window of the object you've selected. For example, select the time signature and click the Get Info button. The Edit Time Signature dialog window pops up. Here you can specify the numerator and denominator. You have options to use a compound time signature also. If for grouping only is checked, the numerator will show as a sum of these numbers. This button here lets you flip the note's stem. This button groups the notes together. To change the graphical appearance, use this button. Before I explain these three buttons, let's select Preferences, Event Layer Submenu, and let's move the bar numbers to the second layer. Click OK. Right click on the button 2. The bar numbers are selected here. If I deactivate this button, the bar numbers become locked. Activate this button, and now you can move the bar number. This button works with the Layout layer, and this one with the Global Layout layer. Now let's record something. Let's create a second MIDI track.